were involved in the whole organization, but the crisis team. And the most peculiar thing was we based our scenario on the simultaneous attacks on the underground and mainline station. So we had to suddenly switch an exercise from fictional to real. So we had to suddenly switch an exercise from fictional to real. Just to get this right, you were actually working today on an exercise that envisioned yes. virtually this scenario. Uh, almost precisely. And we chose a scenario with their assistance, which is based on a terrorist attack because they're very close to uh, a property occupied by Jewish businessmen. They're in the city, and there are more American banks in the city than there are in the whole of New York. A logical thing to do. This is the United States Embassy in a country we shall call land. Psychological operations. This man is the expert on the subject. His name is Leo Hamilton, and he is a lieutenant colonel in the United States Army. Earlier today, he was designated the Psychological Operations Staff Officer Advisor. Soon, with the other officers on the advisory team, he will be flying to host land. In the area of psychological operations, PSYOP, Colonel Hamilton qualifies as a veteran with considerable field experience. Now he is building on that knowledge, supplementing it with specifics concerning host land, its geography, its economy, its governmental structure. Above all, he is concerned with its people, their way of life, their religion, their culture, their sense of national identity, or lack of it. He must know the people of Hostland, for their minds will be his primary objective. For their minds will be his primary objective. As promised by the ambassador, a team of American military advisors arrives in Hostland just a few days after that country's official request for assistance. Their initial destination is the United States Embassy, and they are met by a representative of the military attaché. Like the others on the team, Colonel Hamilton has come to his assignment well prepared. But he still faces many hours of additional study and research before he can begin to initiate a PSYOP program. At the embassy, he meets with the local United States Information Service representative for a briefing on all programs that may be already underway in host land. He reviews the psychological objectives the United States hopes to achieve in host land. Objectives based on official U.S. foreign policy. Confers with the chief of the United States Agency for International Development. This knowledge is of vital significance, for his efforts must harmonize all other American activities within host land. Writers and publishers. Farmers. I don't and religious leaders. The church tells its parishioners, no vaccine, no service for you. Each will have a perspective that is peculiar to his own particular group. Problems, real or imagined, will come to the fore. This face-to-face, eye-to-eye confrontation with the population provides the PSYOP officer with a tool that is essential to his job. Insight, a look into the minds of a people, a working knowledge of their individual and group needs, attitudes, and ambitions. I execute judgment on you, COVID-19. I demand, I demand, I demand a vaccination to come immediately. Yes. The mighty Hallelujah. Spirit. Glory. Glory. Peace, who is also the Prince of War. As with most countries that find themselves in the midst of a communist-inspired insurgency, 
Postland has a population with a doubtful sense of national unity. Postland does have problems, economic, social, and emotional. And subversive insurgents are always aware of them, always ready to promise instant solutions for the price of revolution. I told you guys, get your popcorn, right? In the more urban areas, where there is less dissension and more of a sense of national integrity, subversives achieve only minor disturbances at best. But real grievances must not be ignored. Initial analysis indicates that the target audiences can be broken down into three basic groups. The subversives, the government supporters, and then the big group in the middle, the uncommitted civilians. Any PSYOP effort will have to encompass all three groups. Having mentally worked out, altered, rejected, and then finally accepted plans for the military psychological operations program, they now prepare to put them on paper as a formal proposal. They list the major psychological objectives, then the various functional group target audiences, the objectives for each of these functional groups, the severity and stage of subversive insurgency in which the various target groups find themselves, the proposed psychological military activities that should be instituted, and the proposed program to help these activities. After securing recommendations and the necessary approvals from his own people, and making sure that the military psychological operations plan fits in with the USIS country plan already in effect. The plan is checked with the government of Hostland. Approved by them, it now becomes the psychological operations doctrine for the Hostland military forces. To implement the plan, it becomes necessary for Colonel Hamilton to request the support of military training teams elements of a U.S. Psychological Operations Battalion assigned to his theater of operation. Among the support elements needed are the light mobile printing team with its printing and editorial shelters. Also needed is a radio team to support existing radio stations particularly in the back country. An audiovisual vehicle will help to increase the effectiveness of face-to-face -face communications. And a loudspeaker team will support tactical operations. One of the initial steps of the military PSYOP program is directed toward the Hostland military establishment itself. Since the military represents the government to the populace, their actions and attitudes can do much to create a favorable image of that government in the minds of the people. Postland soldiers are provided with rules of conduct toward civilians and impressed with the importance of observing them. A soldier's attitude goes a long way toward implementing an effective military PSYOP program. Another portion of the PSYOP program, primarily directed toward the civilian population, is concerned with developing national unity. Once the people start to consider themselves as a national group, acceptance of their government tends to increase, thus making penetration by subversives much more difficult. The proper conduct of the individual soldier towards the people is a critical factor in creating this sense of national unity. Touring groups of performers are used to attract attention. They are particularly effective in remote areas. Entertainment or diversion of any kind is eagerly awaited.
Entertainment teams like this one attract crowds of people wherever they appear. Controlled interaction can result in group belonging and assist in developing a sense of national unity. A continuing effort is made to link the PSYOP program with progress to help the people help themselves. This makes them see the military and the government as positive images. Throughout these efforts, the PSYOP program keeps the people informed. They are told what is being done. They are told why it is being done. And they are told how it will benefit them. In areas where the insurgent is openly recruiting and receiving aid from the people, an internal security program takes the greatest PSYOP effort. But if it were not for the insurgents, these restrictions would not be necessary. And that when insurgent activities cease, restrictions will be removed. Medical attention for wounded civilians should be made available to the maximum extent possible. It must be made very obvious to the civilian that his welfare and safety are of great concern to his government. That they are, in fact, the major interest of his government. The complaints of civilians against soldiers are given full attention. Rules of conduct involving actions of soldiers toward civilians are rigidly enforced. The moment the citizen is convinced that his government is there to serve and protect him, he will begin to support and serve his government. The moment the citizen is convinced that his government is there to serve and protect him, he will begin to support and serve his government. With the PSYOP program underway, it becomes necessary to evaluate its effectiveness. Improvements and changes must be continually made based on the evaluations of current intelligence. You are looking at the most important man in the world. In America, he is called John Doe. Other countries have other names for him. He is the man without a face. Every man, the average citizen. The man who totals a billion when added to all his counterparts all over the world. In the final analysis, he will decide the future of the world. Because his importance is clearly recognized by forces that seek world domination, his mind has become a target. Because his importance is clearly recognized by forces that seek world domination, his mind has become a target.